In this video, I want to talk about Colorcraft's purpose. In this video, I want to talk about Colorcraft's purpose. Why why this business and like what are our what's our mission? What's our vision? What's what are our core values as a company? Who, who are we? And values is really something that you, you interview for and you, you find people that align with the greater creation. And for me, what has motivated me with this particular business is it's been an incredible channel and platform for my personal growth and my business development. Um, so it's almost like an educational company for business development and investment. And I've I've learned a lot through having that attitude about business, and we're looking to build a team of people who are val have that as a, as a core value is realizing our potential together as a team and what we can create and what kind of freedom we can create with this type of business and what kind of leaders we can become using this as a platform for our leadership development. And I've got this one page printout, which you can download, uh, clicking the link you can download a copy of it. It's just literally a one-page printout um, that kind of defines the whole purpose of Colorcraft painting and what, what role it serves for all of us. Um, so one of the problems that I've identified in the painting industry specifically is that it's a very unprofessional and leadership-restrained business. So a big part of the purpose is to address that is us as leaders being a part of this industry and developing ourselves as, as leaders and as community leaders and as people of integrity and people with skills, valuable business skills and organizational skills, we can actually make a big difference in this industry while developing ourselves for all the future aspirations and other companies that we might want to build and get involved with throughout our lifetime. So, you know, if you've been onboarded as a franchise owner with us, you, uh, you're, you're, you're part of a family that is growth oriented. And the vision I had when I first started the franchise was to have five local leaders. So five people in British Columbia, like regionally, basically, and each of us running like a million dollar business fran franchise. And we all just share best practices. We learn together, we grow together. Um, we obviously make a lot of money together. And it's five local businesses split between five million. It's actually listed here. It's five million dollars in five years split between five local franchises run by five community leaders, and that was that's the original vision I had. Now that I've really started building out the model, um, my vision is actually expanding, and that's something we're going to talk about in vision creation. But every time I hit new milestones with building this franchise, my vision seems to expand, but. That was the original vision, is just getting the first five of us and being able to learn and grow together. That's what I thought would be valuable, is being able to share experiences and have fun building something together. And it goes in part with that whole first pillar of franchising, or I think it's the second pillar of like doing things in community, is a lot more fun than doing things alone. Um, and our mission at, Fran at, uh, at Colorcraft is to be the clear brand leader for professional painting services in the lower mainland of BC, but to be a clear brand leader. So in the painting industry in general, and most home services companies for that matter, uh, very few people are actually building brands, recognizable brands that uh, people in the local community can clearly identify. And when they think about whatever that service is, it's just like, these are the brands that come to mind first. So painting is a very fragmented industry. There's thousands of competitors and very few people. If you were to go knock on five, 10 doors uh, in, the local, in your local neighborhood and ask them who they, what are the local painting companies that they know off the top of their head, very few of them will actually have an answer or know what painting companies are even available out there. So building a brand is really what this is all about, is a recognizable brand that when you know, in the future, when you knock on a few doors, people are like, oh, I know one or two painting companies and we're one of those names. And that's what we're doing here is that together we can get a lot more exposure and build a brand.
And that's what I'm interested in is that's, that's the fun part. While everyone else is out building their business, we're building a brand for the industry. So underneath all of that, if you actually look at the one pager here, there are 10 core values. And these are the things that I have found to be the most important components for ensuring success uh, as we build this franchise model and build this company. Um, the values are really something that's internal to, to our team. It's the things that are important to us uh, as people and as leaders. And what I've known for a long time, and I haven't always done the best job of this, and but it is definitely a pillar, is number one principle is to value people. We are in a people-based business. And this is an industry where you can do really well and you can learn a lot um, but you can also do very poorly. And if you don't treat the people involved really well, you're only really as good as that as the people that are around you. And uh, there's a lot of talented painters out there. There's a lot of people, talented managers out there. But if you don't treat them well, they won't be around. And if there's and this is this business is all about people, as you'll learn as you go through this video training. So it's all about bringing on the right people putting them in the right place and giving them the tools and resources and encouragement um, that they need as they grow and journey with you uh, and develop into leaders themselves. So value one is just value people. Take care of the people who serve the clients. And the essence is if you have people who serve, if you have people, you pay them well, you treat them well, they're going to take care of the clients. The clients are the ones that are going to take care of the brand development and the company's growth by loving you right? And recommending you and actually getting referrals and all that stuff. All the best ways to do business is just by making your customers happy, which is done through taking care of your employees. Um, number two, which is one of my favorites, is play the long game. Business in general is a long-term development. Building great things takes time. Rome was not built in a day. It's it takes time to build things and make them awesome and achieve excellence. So don't be in a rush. Um, it's taken me years just to even write the, the, the operations manual, which is what I'll be teaching in this video program. Is it, it takes a lot of time to really refine a system, find a formula for success, and then develop that formula. All these things take time. So play the long game and don't be too hasty. One of the things in our industry is that or not actually, it's not even our industry, just entrepreneurship all over the place in North America. People are have lost a lot of the patience that is required to build great things. And we tend to hop around a lot, quit things too early, and not really devote to the long-term path of development and growth. And as investors and as entrepreneurs, you know, be systematic and slowly, continuously develop skill sets and competence and build and operating systems for your franchise. Uh, and you will be successful. So number two is play the long game. Uh, incremental improvements and continuous building. That's, that's number two. Number three is have a customer's focus. So again, you can ensure a lot of customer focus by treating your team really well and developing your team and training them really well. But really just keeping that top of mind is it's our customers who drive our, our, our growth and refer us to other people in the neighborhoods and the local communities. So just treat them well. There is a lot of money in this industry. This is a multi-billion dollar industry. And if you follow this system, you price your products well, you can pay your people well, and you can really treat your customers well. So you do those two things, treat the people well, employees and customers, you will be ahead of the curve, I promise you. Number four is simplify. It's focus and simplify. So keep things simple. This is not a complicated business. It is a simple business that doesn't change a lot from year to year. It's, and it can be a very lean business as well. So focus and simplify. Do more with less. Lean, productive, fixed costs with A players is all that you need. So just get the right people, people who are pros in this field, master painters and yeah, really high level painters, get them on your team and give them the tools they need, which is not a lot. You don't, there's not a lot of 
tools and equipment in this industry and you can do a lot with just one production vehicle you can run like four or five crews off of one van so there's it's a very lean business it's a very recession proof business and with that you can actually do really well if you keep it lean and stay focused on the simplicities of it so that's principle four keep it simple <laughs> uh number five is extreme ownership take take ownership over over the results that you're getting and hold the people that you bring on accountable to the results that they've been assigned to, to, to deliver to the company. So keeping that extreme ownership uh, in, the, in the mindset in within yourself and yourself as a coach as well for your team and me as a coach to you, um, taking ownership over results is... Uh, it really ensures success and and it basically is just a full accountability program. Those I'd say are the top five uh, principles, but I've got five more that I really love and I, I couldn't really refine it down to five. So uh, number six is to empower leaders. So develop leaders, give them the tools that they need and then let them solve problems. Uh, and that's what, you know, even building this video program for, for all of you and everyone on the team, it, that's really my job as the franchisor uh, on the, and as the CEO of the business is just to keep building more resources and tools and listening to you guys. What do you guys need to make this easier and then solve problems? So it's And then goes for all the painting teams and, and everyone else who comes into the company. Just do they have the resources they need to be successful? Uh, I remember reading a book one time and uh, I think there was three main things that were most important for managers. Number one was uh, you, you're the team, whoever the supervisor is, whoever's reporting to that supervisor, it's important that they know them and like them and trust them. So like, they like their supervisor was the most important indicator of successful relationship. Number two was that they knew what was expected them, of them at work. So they had a clear thing that they had to do and deliver to the company. They, and they were very clear about what it meant to be successful. And that was number two. And number three was just, do I have the tools to deliver and do my job? Do I have the equipment that I need to be successful? And that's what, uh, you know, doing this and I'm trying to get people set up and you guys set up for success. So giving people the tools they need to be successful. And that's how we empower leaders is giving people who have a lot of talent and potential the tools they need to go out and solve problems and yeah, grow the business, grow themselves, right? Number seven is celebrating uh, success and embracing the journey. So I feel like this is almost actually should be on the first five principles, but celebrating and, and loving the journey that you're on. So one thing I've definitely learned in my business life is to move away from outcome orientation. Outcome orientation has made me miserable in my business life. It's really all about what you're doing and, and the experiences that you're creating and having fun with every single stage of the business development. Um, every time that I've, ever, I've gotten overly outcome-oriented in business, I'm no longer present and I'm basically too future-oriented that I'm not really enjoying the fullness of the stage that I'm in because I'm, just, I'm, I'm always dreaming of the next stage. And... Through practice, I have learned to em embrace the journey and just be here now, present with where I'm at and the stage I'm in, right? The stage I'm in in this exact moment is creating this video course and being present with you here right now on camera and just having a good time with this stage of the journey. Um, but you will have similar experiences in your franchise. It's well, like there's going to be all these places on the transition curve where if you can learn to derive and embrace those stages of the journey, you'll have a very full journey for the better and for the worse. Number eight is radical transparency. Company value uh, that I really embrace is really just sharing the fullness of not just um, what's going on within the company and being transparent with like results and transparent with numbers and KPIs, but 
transparent about what I'm, what we're all going through as people and in our life journey, right? It's business and life and personal. It really all just blends together. It's one, it's one thing, right? There's not, you know, that's what I've, I've felt. And when I'm more authentic about what I'm really going through in my life, um, I find I I have a better experience of my, my, it kind of feeds into embracing the journey, principle seven of just full authenticity, full transparency and being honest with each other about things, um, being willing to call each other out, all those kinds of things. That's what radical transparency is all about. Principle eight. Principle nine is at the end of the day, deliver results. So run your business by the numbers, track the key inputs. And as much as we can tell stories all day long and excuses about this or that, the numbers do tell a story. And as my background is in finance, the numbers tell a story. So those are the results of, regardless of all how it arrived at what, are we growing our business? Are we getting better at what we're doing? And tracking your business by the numbers is a very key and important principle. And number 10 is think big. Small thinking self-fulfills. So inspire yourself and others with big and bold. Um, and that in the next couple of videos from now, we're going to talk about vision, my vision, your vision, but really taking the time to put, you know, putting time aside for yourself to really dream, right? It's hard for a lot of people to really dream big because for a lot of reasons, but we get, we get stuck in small thinking and often we don't allow ourselves to dream big for, because our limiting beliefs just block us right from the get go of before you even start to dream, you, you start telling yourself, oh, I can't do that. And I've done this, and that's been a big part of what I've had to develop and coach myself through, and I've been coached through it, and I'm, I'll always be working on it. But how to dream bigger in my life? What do I really want? What, do, what would really excite me and inspire me? And what is my potential? What, are, what dormant gifts do I have within myself that can be awakened if I just allow myself to go there? So dream big and think big, and don't ever forget to do that as you go on this journey. These are the company values. Here's the one pager. I personally have printed it out, put it in a frame, and I just literally stick it there on my desk because it gets me centered in my creation and in my work. And that's what I'm working on is continuously building and playing the long game so that we can develop something that's useful for other people and for ourselves to suit our lifestyle and follow our dreams. So that is it for this video, and we will see you in the next one.